Please join me in welcoming our class of 2028 <coughs> Commitment to Graduate keynote speaker, Mr. Jack Kirk.
He taught me the importance of always being to work on time. And he taught me the importance of doing the job right the first time. He didn't care about how fast you did the job. He just wanted to make sure that you did it right. And he had a little system to kind of reinforce that. You see, while we got 25 cents an hour, we also got fined. And if he found a tug of gum on the floor in your area, it cost you a nickel. And if you, he came into your area after you'd gone home and there was a light left on, it cost you a nickel. And if he found some dirt somewhere on the floor in your area, it cost you a nickel. Well, a nickel wasn't much. Except when you're making 25 cents an hour. It kind of added up. So he really taught us how important it was to do the job and to do it right and to do it right the first time. And that carried over in every job that I've ever had. It's just remembering how and what he thought was the way that we should do our job. Well, if we went through the years I had a chance to do a lot of things. I had a chance to be in a lot of positions. Uh, probably the part of the job that I enjoyed the most was the 30 years I spent working as a sales trainer and a motivation speaker going around the country and, and, and meeting a lot of people. But you know, I tried to teach those same things that the sales people I trained that Gary taught me how important it was to have a smile on your face, have a spring in your step. When you're on your way to get something, act like that you were in a hurry to get there and get back and get the job done. And those were all things that we were taught in that in that time of the, as a student in the school. Well, you know, over the years I've hired hundreds and hundreds of people. I really have. And I've seen a lot of success and a few failures. But you know, the reason and the difference between the two pretty much go back to the way it was when I was a kid. It's the same reasons. The jobs were different, but the reasons were the same. And I I I tribute that that training that I gave these people, the same training that I received. But I had another thing going for me, and that was my mom. My mom uh, was the most optimistic person that I ever met. As he mentioned, she had uh, 15 children. She didn't make anybody optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> but she graduated in 1919 from Williamson Schools. First in her family to graduate in May of 1919. And she took a test passed the test, and in September, she was teaching school. But in those days, you could only teach school if you were unmarried. And as soon as she got married, she had to stop teaching. Well, she taught two years and married my dad. Now, he was a dairy farmer, and he had a whole different idea of what success was. He thought you should have calves and kids every spring. <laughs> <laughs> and consequently, they had 15 children in the next 19 years. But when my little sister was in the second grade, my mom went back and taught school 20 more years. But she never went to college. And she retired out of Mason Allen Elementary School as a first grade teacher. But she was always optimistic about everything. In fact, I was sharing with somebody earlier as, as a child, if we said the word can't, we got our mouth washed off the soap. That word was never allowed in our vocabulary. She used to say can't, never did anything. So she always saw the glass half full. She always saw the, 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 the sun was always part of shining. She just always was positive about everything. I think one of the memories I have is coming downstairs, we had this pop-up toaster that did pop up. Probably get her really for that. And I come downstairs early because I had to be in school at seven. I 
come downstairs and she'd be over at the wastebasket scraping that piece of bread, getting the char off of it, and say, it's not burnt, it's just nice and brown. You know, you bite it, it just all comes apart. But she always saw everything in the pot. And uh, she had a, ter a terrific influence on my life and on my brothers and sisters and on the students that she taught in school, I'm sure. Well, I'll tell you, uh, if you just kind of bear with me, I'll share a couple of other thoughts with you kids. But first, I, I, I want to ask you to do something. Because this is school, I thought I should give you some homework. And uh, what I want you to do, not tomorrow, not next week, but before you pillow your head tonight, I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to write down who's important. Just write down who's important. Now, we all have friends and acquaintances, all of those kind of people, but who is really important to you in your life? And when you get that done, you'll be half done. Because I want you to turn the piece of paper over and on the other side, I want you to write down what's important. What really is important in your life. And then I want you to put that piece of paper somewhere where you can see it every day. And I want you to think about who's important and what's important. We each have 1,100, 440 minutes a day. And you know, we need to spend those minutes wisely. And too often, we spend all of our time doing things for people who aren't important and doing things that are not important. And I want to encourage you to think about the important people in your life and what's important in your life, and try to every day do something for somebody that's important to you. Now, the list will change as the years go by. Some names will come off, some other names will come on. But I've been doing this for more than 40 years, and it's worked really well for me. I try to do something every day for somebody that's really important in my life. And I try to do those things that are important and mean something to me. Because too much time is wasted. And that's just something that I want you to think about. And I want you to do that before you go to bed tonight. About 60 years ago, I decided that I wanted to study a group of people that were successful. I thought, you know, if you study success, it'll help you to be successful. And so after looking at different groups and trying to figure out who to, who to study, I picked the President of the United States. Now they're a very successful group. And so in the next 60 years, I spent a lot of time trying to develop a relationship and to study the lives of these presidents. And in that time, I managed to collect about 8,000 items of presidential memorabilia. I went to inaugurations and inaugural balls and political conventions. Uh, I became a member of both parties because I didn't want politics to be involved. I wanted the office of the president. I met five U.S. presidents. And I spent a lot of time studying their lives. And you know, there isn't any great, great difference between presidents of the United States and principals of the high school. Or <laughs> now, now, now the pain may be a little different, but they all are achievers, and they've all been successful, and they've all found ways to develop relationships with people. And I tell you. The important thing that you need to understand as you get out into this world and you travel down this world called life 
is developing relationships and getting people to like you. I used to tell salespeople, nobody's going to buy from you until they like you. And I think it's important for us to understand that relationships with other people are very important. And how do we do that? How do you develop relationships with other people? Well, there's, there's no secret. There isn't any secret to success. And you probably have already figured that out. There's a difference between success and, and failure has nothing to do with secrets. It has everything to do with being honest, with being forthright. It's important that we uh, uh, we, we do what we say we're going to do, and we say we're going to do it the way we say we're going to do it. It's important to be one that person that follows through and handles situations as they're developed. I got just a minute or two longer, and then I'm going to just share this with you. I, uh, I got up this morning and realized that this was 31,000. 918 days that I've been alive in this world. And you know, one of the things that I try to do every morning is say to myself, today is going to be a great day, and tomorrow is going to be even better. I, I like to read from this book, and it's got a lot of different names. Some people call it the good book. Some people call it God's Word. Some people call it the Bible. I call it the Book of Instruction. Because it has all the directions and instructions we need to live a happy and successful life. You see, I live out in the mountain underneath a cloud of the sky. Oh, I live in the valley. I've been down there. I know what pain and suffering is. I know what discouragement is. I have been down that valley, but I'm not going to stay down there. I'm going to get back up on the mountain. Because you know, up in the mountain, the grass is greener, the sky is bluer, and the birds all sing in the key of G just for me. And I love living on the mountain. And you can live there too if you decide that you want to be a positive person. If you want to be a person that sees the glass half full. If the day is always part of the sun, if you see those things that, that you know are, are right, I think it's important for us to, to take that positive attitude and it'll get you so much further. I mean, there isn't a person in this room that doesn't know somebody that you never want to ask how you do it today. You just don't want to hear their answer. <laughs> But you know, we get a choice. We can either be negative or we can be positive. And I'll tell you that being a positive person, keeping a smile on your face, looking at the good things in life, and, and as you go over your life and think about your life, you've had a few days that weren't so good. But how many days have you had that weren't good? I'll tell you, I wrote my autobiography. It's entitled Feeling Good all the time. And in it, you'll find that I had some trips down in the valley and I had some problems here and there, but I didn't live down there. I got back up there and get back up on that mountain where you can enjoy life and enjoy all the people around you and all the things around you. You know, we have so many blessings and we need to be mindful of those blessings. And the sooner you learn that, the better your life is going to be the more you're going to enjoy life and the, and the more you're going to be able to, to just have a happy life and I'm going to leave you with this last thought and I, I believe this is true it's worked for me and it'll work for you and that is if you think you can or if you think you can you're probably right